Hello, this is Anne speaking. A very good evening, miss. I'm the private investigator that you seek. How may I be at your service? Yes, as I've explained before, I was separated from my biological mother since I was a little girl in China. Are you able to aid me in locating her? Certainly. I'm going to need you to provide me some background information regarding your last encounter with your mother. I remember it was in a small village in Guangdong province when I got separated with her. Great. We could use this as a clue. With technologies like Google Earth, it will make our work much easier. As computers become more relevant in our every action, it is inevitable that digital information will become increasingly important in legal processes as well. This process of collecting information using digital device is called digital sleuthing. Hmm, can you explain further what is digital sleuthing? According to Dark Hadiths, Digital sleuthing refers to any activity you carried out using your computer, even if it's just setting up a password to protect it, applying enterprise digital rights or deleting it. As long as you are determined, any data or information can be extracted using the technologies we have today. In fact, a whole industry has been created around helping government, law enforcement and enterprises by following digital evidence trials as well as extracting the bits and bytes that trace the path of our digital lives. Who is Doug Haddix? Doug Haddix is the Executive Director of Investigative Reporters and Editors Incorporated, IRE. IRE is a grassroots non-profit organization dedicated to improving the quality of investigative reporting IRE was formed in 1975 to create a forum in which journalists throughout the world could help each other by sharing sorry, ideas, news gathering techniques, and news sources. He oversees training, conferences, and services for 6,000 members worldwide and for programs including the National Institute for Computer Assisted Reporting NICAR. Previously, Hadix works as an IRE training director, an assistant vice president at Ohio State University, and director of the Keplinger program in public affairs journalism. An IRE member since 1996, Hadix led investigations and computer assisted reporting at the Columbus Dispatch for a decade. He earned a master's degree in journalism from Indiana University. The two types of digital sleuthing include web or internet sleuthing and social media sleuthing. These two types of in digital sleuthing will be further explained later in this video. As an internet user, we need to think like a researcher. This is because internet creates a lot of noise with too many unknown sources and distributors online, although the internet provided a lot of convenience in our life. Before explaining further about digital sleuthing, let's see what is fake news. A fact is a thing that is known to be consistent with objective reality and can be proven to be true with evidence. For example, this sentence contains words. It's a linguistic fact. Further, Abraham Lincoln was the 60th president of the United States and Abraham Lincoln was assassinated are both facts of the historical time. All of these statements have the epistemic quality of being ontologically superior to opinion or interpretation. They are either categorically necessary or supported by adequate historical documentation. Conversely, while it may be both consistent and true that most cats are killed, it is not a fact. Although in cases of opinion, there is an argument for the acceptance of popular opinion as a statement of common wisdom, particularly if ascertained by scientific polling. Unlike misinformation, which is inaccurate because a reporter has confused facts, fake news is created with the intent to manipulate someone or something. 
Also, fake news is an inaccurate, sometimes sensationalistic report that is created to gain attention, mislead, deceive or damage a reputation. Fake news can be spread quickly when it provides this information that is aligned with the audience's point of view, because such content is not likely to be questioned or discounted. In response to criticism about failing to curb the distribution of fake news during the 2016 presidential election in the United States, Facebook and Google have taken steps to crack down on disinformation. They have formed a coalition called First Draft and are working with major media outlets to educate internet users about how to spot fake news. They are also working with third parties to create independent fact-checking websites and are also exploring ways to identify and label news stories that cannot be verified. Much like the way Wikipedia editors label entries they feel should be questioned. There are a few crucial steps. The first is to consider the source. The second is to check the date. The third is to read beyond. And then we need to check the author and see whether they are supporting sources. And then we need to ask the experts. Also, you need to check your biases. Lastly, we need to determine whether it is a joke. Now, let's do some fact-checking. Go to this link and check if the pictures are genuine or not, and if they have been changed in any way. In 2018's IRE conference, Doug Hadix presented on how to use Google, and that can be used to collect information. First off, Internet sleuthing refers to carrying out a search or investigation in the manner of a detective via the Internet. Do you know that you can utilize Google's advanced research engine to search for information more effectively. Using the advanced search engine, users may narrow down search results for complex searches and they are able to find sites updated in the last 24 hours or images that are in black or white. Users may find pages by keying in a particular phrase and then narrow down their search by keying in the file type site or domain, last update of the site, language of the page, and so on. So let's jump in, uh, beginning with kind of better searching on Google a little bit. Um, there are various tools. How many people have used the advanced search in Google? Most people. So there are some things that you can do in advanced search using different file types, for instance, maybe some things you might not have thought about. You can search in the advanced search on Google, for instance, just for particular types of files. You can search just for spreadsheets. If you're looking for data, for instance, from you know, flu season, you could do an advanced Google search with the keyword flu. You could search the Ohio Department of Health, that site, and then you could, under file type, go in and restrict it to just spreadsheets. And you might find data more quickly that way. Government agencies are just as bad as most of our news sites. Uh, newspaper websites are still notoriously hard to navigate and hard to find stuff. So using an advanced Google search, uh, you can often find things. You can search just for PowerPoint presentations. You can search just for spreadsheets. You can search just for PDFs. So think about, you know, as you know, advanced ways to search on Google file type, domain, if you want to just do a deep search of one particular agency, you just put in, you know, DOT.OH or whatever o the Ohio Department of Transportation website is, and then you can search types of data and keywords and that kind of thing too. If you ever wonder how web pages look like in the past, here are some tools that allow users to take a walk down the virtual memory lane of internet in the past. Wayback Machine provides a place to preserve digital artifacts for researchers, historians, etc. but can just as easily be used for entertainment to see what a page used to look like. Users may also access a page from a website that long, no longer exists and was shut down through Wayback Machine. 
website watcher, Virginista, change detection or follow that page can be used to track website revision. Any changes made to the website can be detected. Site Delta, which is a Firefox add-on, can be also used to track website changes. Users may use similar site to search for various related sites that are useful to them. To carry out a deep background check on a person, Report.org has provided a checklist called Who is John Doe that allows one to investigate whether a person is subjected to any lawsuits, bought, sold, or owned any real estate, has any license for occupation or has any criminal record, and so on. A person can be tracked if they did something wrong. There are also a few free public records photos for users to check public records. Few examples are BRB publications, article, free public record directories and search systems. Article is a collection of websites containing publicly available information compiled for the use of the advancement community. Portico brings every website by categories and this enables users to search for sites they want more quickly and easily. BRB sets up everything based on geography. Users can find information they need based on countries. Information related to business, properties, and politics can be also searched up through various sites. Sites like Family Tree Now, PIPL, One to Three People, Pick you, social mention, who's stalking, and that's them are used to search for people. Zaba search can be used to search for addresses. Hunter.io can be used to search for emails. And Vinplace can be used to search for vehicles. Business records, such as company name and so on, can be searched through Corporation Wiki. Domain tools help discover who is behind a website. It connects indicators from users' network with nearly every active domain and IP address on the internet. Domain Namepedia DNpedia, allows users to discover what domains have been registered lately. USA Spending OpenSecrets.org and FollowTheMoney.org allows users to seek for information regarding government money spending and federal contracts. On the other hand, Legistorm is used to search for info on members of the Congress. Besides that, data about court cases and crimes can be also found on the internet. Pacer and Pacer Monitor are websites to search for federal court cases. SQOOP can be used to search for business documents and federal courts. Sex offender registries can be found in the National Sex Offender Public Website, also known as NSOPW. Inmates information can be also found on the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Users can search for inmates by names or their BOP register number. Social media studying Sounds ominous and illegal, right? Not really. Nothing about social media studying is illegal. It has nothing to do with hacking. It simply involves using free search tools to filter publicly accessible online information more effectively. Of course, what you actually do with the information is entirely up to you. On the 2018 African Journalism Investigative Conference, Michael Salzwido from Social Weaver introduced several free social media suiting platforms for journalists to deeply analyze people's social media background. Salzwido says, people leave digital footprints or fingerprints, which are not always easily visible. We can use various tools to see what is hiding in the dark. Plenty of data is out there with the user's consent, but often they are unaware. It becomes a question of ethics. What is interesting to the public versus what is in the public's interest? 
Check your privacy settings carefully. Social media sleuthing is not hacking and it's not illegal, but the most important aspect of social media sleuthing is to be a journalist, not a stalker, he says. Don't post or do anything questionable, regardless of the platform or privacy setting. For journalists, social media sleuthing provides a lot of useful information about who you are investigating. For example, you can extract helpful information from social media, like biographical details, including employment history, education, and other affiliations, personal and work contact information, approximate location, profile photo, username, personal website, employer's website, members of an individual social network. It is important to keep in mind that all information posted on social media are self-generated, which can be completely false information. According to the research, what's the deal with web sleuthing? Yagni, Linus, Wilson, and Kelly discovered digital sleuthing usually uses 44 unique online spaces and there was a total of 141 references to online spaces, including Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, Blogs, Google, Web Sloops, eBay, YouTube, Unspecified Chat Rooms, Imgur, Doe Network, 4chan, Tumblr, Suicide Chat Room, Craigslist, LinkedIn, and MySpace. If journalists or someone are looking for creative, and innovative ways to get public information or a source or someone that you're investigating, you can try social media sleuthing. As figure 2 shows, online spaces are categorized depending upon what type of online space they represent. They were social media, chat including 4chan and reddit, case-specific sites, products and services sites, content sharing sites, search engines, other sites, maps, and messages services. Social media was used both to create an online gathering space around a case. For instance, Facebook works as a resource to search for information about individuals connected to a case, to viewing their Twitter feeds or other social networking profiles. There is a lot to be learned about the suspect through their Facebook information and their network of friends. Many times, even fake Facebook accounts will reveal the person, even though they did it anonymously. This is done through special tools designed for law enforcement that utilize developers' API to review networks of people, email, addresses, etc., which review in setting up in the Facebook. Facebook presents journalists with a unique set of challenges. First, the site is massive, with more than 2 billion monthly active users. On the other hand, each user's timeline can seamlessly switch between public and private posts, and penetrating one's timeline for relevant information can be daunting. There are shortcuts to searching Facebook, but they are far from perfect. Every Facebook profile has a numerical ID, which can be found on several free sites if they are public-facing. Facebook in-house search sometimes produces underwhelming results, but conducting a Facebook string search, simply writing a custom URL and asking Facebook, you can generate that page by entering it into the address bar. Don't change anything. Insert your keywords into the template. String searches also apply to specific phrases that can help you understand the spread of fake news. Besides Facebook, Twitter can be also used to search for information. Here are some websites that enable users to search for information on Twitter. You can use follow.me to take a close look at Twitter's account. Google to see if anyone else is reporting or tweeting about it. You can also use TW Explorer to find hashtags used for a breaking story. You can also use Wolfram Alpha to check whether at the time and date of a tweet. And lastly, check landmarks against Google Earth. 
Besides that, you can also use Twitter's search engine to collect information. Enter a keyword into Twitter's search engine, and when the results can be retrieved, click on the link that says Show in the box that says Search Filters. As Hadik said, you can do things like just filter these to look for a keyword. You know you can just turn on a filter. You've got it all like 2800 tweets and you can say show me all the tweets that contain a certain word. So if you want to see what the governor has tweeted about Trump, you can do this and you have all of these results on a spreadsheet. Then click on the link that reads advanced search. You can then build your search from words, phrases, hashtags, the exclusion of words, specific people, mentions of specific people, and from different date ranges, among other criteria. In conclusion, a better understanding is needed of the public's perception and behaviour concerning digital intellectual property. When popular attitudes and practices and out of sync with laws, the enforcement of laws becomes more difficult, which may instill in people a lack of confidence and respect. What we recommend is research and data collection should be pursued to develop a better understanding of what types of digital copying people think are permissible, what they regard as infringements, and what falls into market ill-defined areas. Such research should address how these views differ from one community to another, how they differ according to type of material, for example, software, recorded music, online documents, how user behavior follows user beliefs, and to what extent further knowledge about copyright laws is likely to change user behavior. Providing additional statutory limitations on copyright and additional statutory protections may be necessary over time to adapt copyright appropriately to the digital environment. The fair use doctrine may also prove useful as a flexible mechanism for adapting copyright to the digital environment. What we recommend is legal, economic and public policy research should be undertaken to help determine the extent to which fair use and other exceptions and limitations to copyright should apply in the digital environment. As public policy research, legal developments, and the marketplace shape the scope of fair use and other limitations on copyright and demonstrate a need for additional actions that may be needed to adapt the law, educate the public about it, or enforce the law may become clearer. I see. Thank you so much for the information. Please contact me if you have further updates. No problem, miss. A quick reminder to internet users, always check the accuracy of the facts online. Don't get caught. Rather be right than to rush to be first.